All right, I'm recording, Matt. Welcome to Feeny Daily, my friend. Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, of course. Thank you really much. So, uh, Matt Smith is the uh, is not the undercover billionaire star, but was a great impactor. He had a great impact on Undercover Billionaire season two with Grant Cardone. Okay, so for the people who do, who don't know what Undercover Billionaire is, so Matt, correct me if I was wrong somewhere. Uh, the fact is. Discovery Channel picks up a billionaire on a daily basis in America and they ask him, okay, would you make a bet? You just forget whatever you have until now, whatever you have accomplished until now. You have $100 in your name. You cannot use your name. You cannot use your money. You cannot use your contracts or contacts or contacts or uh, anything that you have now. We just drop you somewhere, you know, in America. You don't know which city and you have a it's not really a car, man. I, I don't know. It's a piece of garbage. You know, they give you a piece of garbage car and you have $100 and an iPhone. That's all you have. And you have to turn that $100 into a $1 million business in only 90 days. So Correct. season one with, with, was, uh, with Glenn Stearns and season two, we had three undercover billionaire stars, which I really disrespect that fact. I, I, I think, you know, we had to have one for each which of each of these billionaires, but anyhow, whatever. It was a great show. So Matt Smith was, you know, actually the business partner of Grant Cardone or Louis Curlis or whatever his name was in the show. Yeah, yeah, Louis. <laughs> Louis, yeah. Man, you know what? When I was I, w- watching the show, whenever you were talking, yeah, I, I came with Louis. I was talking with Louis. I was, you know, because how, do, how, do, how didn't you know Grant Cardone? How didn't I? Yeah, man, I, you know, it's surprising for me. Me coming from Iran, I'm right now living in Germany. I know this guy, but I, I mean, it's surprising for me that how didn't you recognize that it was Grant Cardone talking to you? Yeah, I guess we just never really, really clicked that off. We never followed that through. And, you know, there were suspects through the uh, through the process, especially towards the end of the process, where a lot of people started to go, are you, are you Grant Cardone? <laughs> like, there were, even while we were giving pitches to uh, Vern Larson and a few others, they were like, I got to stop for a second. You look, you look pretty darn familiar, but he just, he was amazing at what he did. The discovery channel played such an amazing story. Yeah. Uh, you know, they all had fictitious names as well. So you couldn't find them, you know, and then Grant or Lewis Curtis was, he, you know, he knew he looked like this Grant guy, but he played a great, like, yeah, yeah I look like that guy, but I wish I had that guy's money anyway. <laughs> I look like that guy. <laughs> That's crazy. You know? Like so, that was kind of uh, his his thing. But he did a great job, and the Discovery Channel just did an amazing job, uh, continuing to, to to cover that story from day yeah. one. Yeah, good. So, uh, Matt, how was the? You know what was going on? You were behind the scenes. You know what exactly was going on? Maybe there's something that you want to share with us. I, I what was exactly going on for you? Oh, of which part? I mean, it, it was a crazy ride. You know, I'm watching, yeah, I'm, I watched yesterday, last Friday, Wednesday's episode. So we're we're almost to the grand finale, but I, I watch it while you guys watch it. So I'm like, I've never seen any of it before. I'm waiting to see it it's on the edge of my seat as well. So, uh, so much. I mean, just an, it's just an amazing ride. What a blessing it was. But uh, met some some great people. We we had some fun, and we really changed the dynamic of our community for sure. Yeah, man. So uh, let me, uh, because, you know, uh, maybe it's interesting for people. Of course, it's like the danger of spoilers. But I mean, I'm, I just want to talk about the first episode, maybe episode two or episode three, which Grant came to you. At, it was in a snap fitness that you guys met for the first time or, it, uh, or making a mistake. Am I right? It was first time. It was went first and he called me prior to that. Uh, Ryan Zabukovic from the RV dealership, which you probably saw a great guy, great friend of mine yeah. was like, go meet Matt. He called me and was like, Matt, I, I got to meet you, man. I heard I got to meet you. So that was uh, the first impression. And then I saw him in the gym and I was like, what? And, I, you know, I, I've been around cameras like one or two, but this was a whole different world. There was, there was 10 cameras around drones flying, you know, the discovery channel, they roll deep when they roll. So it was, uh, <laughs> it was definitely, uh, I was, yeah. I was you know, what was going on at the beginning for sure. As you saw in that first episode. You know, Matt, my, my first impression from you was, you know, how nice is this guy, this guy, Matt Smith? You know, if maybe if I had this guy next to me, I, I could have I could have also made a, like hundred, I don't know, million dollars or multi-million dollars companies. But, you know, uh, Matt, because, you know, Grant was pushing a lot because, you know, he, he knew that he has only 90 days. You know, he had a deadline, but he didn't know. You know, I, I can understand like 
maybe you had asked yourself, okay, why is this guy you know, hustling so much, hustling so hard? Were you mad at Grant at some point? Oh, yeah. We, me and Grant got in a, a mini arguments over that. That was our biggest disconnect, and it all made sense at the end. But, like, there's so much that the show doesn't show, but there was definitely – sleepless nights for me there was nights that me and him argued about customers and about things because I, i get it now he was trying to push this thing in a short period of time my goal was more to help my community and, and do this the right way and make sure that we were learning from our mistakes before we, we we took on the rest of the world yeah we we had a product we knew we could sell it but i wanted to make sure that we were doing right by everybody internally and, and, and of course this is my town this is my reputation. I've spent 40 years to, to develop here in this community. The last thing I wanted to do is take advantage of somebody or try to take their money without yeah. delivering a product. So we had a disconnect there. So there was many times that he's like, we need more sales. And I'm like, no, we need to figure <laughs> out what we're doing here. For customers, And then let's go get some more sales. Like, so there was that, and, and you saw some of that in the show, but there was a lot more of that, but you know, now I get it. But, you know, at the time, this Lewis Curtis guy trying to push me to, to go get more sales, uh, yeah. you know, I'm trying to protect the previous sales. Now I get why. There was a sense of urgency there that in hindsight, maybe we would have gotten a few more sales and, uh, and done a few more things because that's, that's all you wanted. <laughs> uh, what, how is uh, Wake Up Pueblo right now doing? Well, amazing. We're just having the time of our life. It's been a blast. We're doing a lot of fun videos. We're, doing, we're, we're changing the way our community thinks and looks and uh, just amazing. You know, we've got a waiting list, a, a significant waiting list to join the, the team right now. So a lot of, a lot of fun stuff. We're, we're doing things outside the box that nobody else is doing. Yeah, that's that's nice. You you know, uh, how long does it take? Does it take you think you know from your point of view that wake up pueblo actually? Sorry, a question. Is it right now wake up or wake up pueblo? The name of your company right now? Uh, wake up pueblo is. Uh, I mean, it's wake up. The website's wake up pueblo, but we we do call ourselves wake up. I mean, the the goal is to uh, wake up America's businesses starting with Pueblo, Colorado. So it, it will. We will. We are going outside of Pueblo already, and we will continue to go outside of Pueblo. Yeah, exactly. That was my that, that was actually my question. Like, when do you see Wake Up or Wake Up Pueblo, your enterprise right now? When do you see that your enterprise becomes a national company or organization? Uh, it's it's moving that way right now. I'm actually uh, me and Grant are meeting on Friday of next week. A week from today, I'll be in uh, Florida, Miami, to meet with Grant to to figure out uh, the directions. And you know, there's there's a great buzz. You know, obviously we're doing right by the customer. We've got a lot of exciting things. We're doing things nobody else is doing out there. So there's a lot of a lot of people that that want to get in. So we're 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 trying to strategize that to see where we want to go with this. That's good to hear. So uh, you know, let, let's talk about yourself a little bit more specifically, because you know, you look young, by the way. Like you don't look. I assume that you were an entrepreneur since day one, or am I wrong? Uh, you, well, it was in my bones since day one, but I did have a full-time job for a long time. Okay. So how old, long time, what do you mean? How old are you? If I'm, if I may ask. 40. You're 40. Um, 40. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nice. And that? yeah. When, when did you start to, you know, be, become an entrepreneur and having your own business? Uh, 25 was when I opened the gym. Um, but I still had a full, I, so at 19, I started with a mattress company um and and i started buying real estate so 20 i bought my first real estate property 21 i bought my second and third 22 i bought my fourth and fifth so i was i was understanding the real estate game prior to 2008 uh 2008 market crash i had made some money in real estate yeah i still had a full-time job that i was working at and then i opened up snap fitness 15 years ago um And from there, it, you know, then it became like an addiction. I'm like, okay, I figured out that system. Let's do that again. So I opened a party bus. I opened a spa. I opened a carpet cleaning business, a total home service business, a tuxedo business. You know, I've been in 10 different industries, uh, completely different industries um, yeah. in 10 different businesses. Now, now I'm in mattresses, gyms, and then uh, wake up. And we got a couple nationwide things we're working on with the mattresses. So a lot of exciting stuff going on right now, but. So it was always in my bones. I started buying, I mean, I was selling gum out of my garage, uh, you know, or out of my lockers in, in middle school. I remember trying to make money, figure out how to do that. But uh, yeah, but I, I did work for a, a company for 18 years while I was developing this on the side, knowing that when I had kids, that was going to change my life. And I wanted to be able to walk away from, from work and for somebody else and only work for myself the moment I had kids and that they knew any different. So I wouldn't work a weekend again for the rest of my life. And that's what I did. Wow. Amazing. Amazing story, man. So, uh, Matt, my question is like the, the, the same question I asked RJ. You know, you had this privilege actually to 
hang, hang out with a billionaire. And, you know, in this case, he was, you know, he's a guy who is like uh, having seminars, teaching people how to make money, how to hustle, how to 10x, as he says, you know, what was uh, like, how, what was the impact on your businesses right now? Like, did, did he, um, you know, did, what did you learn that right now you could change your business with your businesses, actually, in your case? Uh, yeah, I mean, Grant just, he moves at a different pace. And, I, you know, I'm a fast mover. I, I, you know, I've got my CEO, my CFO, they tell me all the time, like, just hold on for the ride. I don't know what Matt's going to do next, but we're ready to pivot and change whatever we do. And I feel like I move pretty fast and strategic on everything we do. But Grant was a different level of speed. That guy just does not stop. And when he, if something doesn't go his way, he just moves on. Like, he doesn't, he doesn't stop and be like, maybe this or maybe there is a chance. No, he's just gone and he's ready to move on to the next project. So, there's a lot of pace that I love about Grant. Uh, his passion is unbelievable. And obviously his, his salesmanship, I went to 10X a couple of weeks ago um, and, and got to see him in action. And, and just the, the world that he's changing is just, it's a beautiful thing to see how many lives he's changed in this world and how many, he is so dedicated to making a difference on this planet and getting as many people to know who he is before he dies. And he's doing just an amazing job of it. Like he's inspiring every day. I mean, I can tell you a million yeah. stories of people that I've met since that come out of the woodworks. They told me they were sleeping in their car. They watched this TV show. Now they're a millionaire, you know, like so many cool things that because of the 10X movement, because of Grant, uh, you know, and he inspired me and my family, like just in this town, like he really helped wake up this town through social media and help let us brag a lot more about what we do so well. So it's, it's been a great journey, but yeah, the guy, the guy is a, is a billionaire for a reason. And yeah, he, you, you throw a Lewis Curtis, no name, no anything. And I, I have no doubt he could do it all over again 10 more times. You know, one of the, uh, like the interesting scenes that I've seen on the, you know, the uh, Undercover Billionaire season two was, you know, after you had that uh, uh, at your mattress company, Snooze, I think is the name, if I'm not, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. You know, you had a day that, you know, Grant came, worked for you for free. And he didn't ask for anything, but the day after, you know, he set the goal of 15K, I think, 15 grand, $15,000 uh, total sales on that day. But, you know, he didn't hit his target. It was like around $11,000, $12,000. And he came to you and you wrote him a check for $10,000. You yeah. didn't know who he is. Actually, like not, he didn't, you know, I, I mean, my question is, where is that trust coming from, man? Like you invest in, in this guy, you bet on him, as he says. Yeah, that's a great question. And that was one of the first ones I got for a long time because they don't, nobody realized how much went into that one episode. There was at least, there was probably seven days that went into that episode. So oh. there was a lot of trust building. You know, you guys sometimes see 10 minutes or 20 minutes of it, but there was a lot before that. And, and I distinctly remember at the beginning of all of this saying, how much do you want out of this? Uh, you know, if you want to do this sales thing, if you want to do this, what are you, what's in it for you? And he was like, let me prove myself. I'm not asking for a dime. Let me go out there and show you what I can do and how I can create this momentum. And then we'll talk about money. And I was like, all right, prove yourself. Let's do this. You know, and to me, any entrepreneur, if you don't think that way, like teach me how to save money or to make money and I'll share. And that's my, that's my mentality on everything, you know, and he, this is a guy that says, here's where you're at. I can get you to here. All I'm asking is a little bit in between done all day long. Anybody comes to me and doubles my business. I'll give you a percentage of that. Let's, let's go. And, and that's really how that all went down. It was more of a, uh, he, I mean, he, he totally, from a family standpoint, we had some lunches together. We had a lot of time together that I'm like, all right, this guy's pretty special. Um, so he earned my trust pretty quick. Uh, but it was, it was more than a day. It was like a week. Yeah. And there was like, so, yeah, and it came in on Mondays when he came in and we talked about that. So, but he grinded for three days straight, like absolutely yeah, so much fun. And, that my wife was stopping cars, jumping in convertibles. He was doing the same thing. Like it was just, it was a fun day, a fun couple of days. Cool. Cool. Man, I wish I were you like at that point, but you know, I, I knew him even if he shaves his beard, his, I don't know, facial hair, his hair. I, I can recognize it really fast, really fast. He has a twin brother, by the way. Did, did you know that Gary Cardone? Like, you know, and it's crazy. One of the, you know, one of the sad things that happened during Undercover Billionaire season two was the COVID, you know, when COVID hit. And it was, I think, day 14 in Grant's journey. After he actually uh, get, you the, get the money from you, you wrote him a check and he sold his car, the truck that, you know, the Discovery crew gave him. And Discovery crew went to him and said, okay, Grant, we have to stop. Like COVID hit and we cannot work anymore. 
And as we saw on the show, he moved back to his hometown, like to Miami, and he disappeared, actually. I don't know. It seems like he disappeared for a while, and he said, okay, I would, lo- I would lose my momentum if I do that. In that period that, you know, the, like the, yeah, when they were filming the whole story, when that stopped, did you call Grant or I don't know where you guys are still in, uh, did you keep in touch with him? Because, you know, he, you wrote him a check and then he disappears, as we see on the show, if I'm not making a mistake. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So we did talk a little bit, but, uh, you know, the funny part about the whole thing is I think at the beginning of this, Grant and myself were a, a very similar where we were like, yeah, this COVID thing's not real. I'll see you in a couple of days. You know, like this isn't really going to take wind. Like uh, people are panicking and freaking out, but it's going to be fine. And, and then that momentum really hit and we're like, oh shit, this is real. There's, yeah. there's some, it's like, so, I, you know, he never cashed that check, which was another big uh, trust thing too, for sure. And then, uh, yeah, we talked a little bit after he left, but not much because he had a fake phone and I don't think he had that during COVID. He only yeah. had his phone. He didn't have the fake discovery phone anymore. So the one that I knew and I text him on at the time, like he, he didn't get those messages. So were you like, okay, this guy just, you know, stole my money or something because he, he didn't uh, uh, reply? you. Yeah, I, I was trusting it. You know, it was, it was funny though, because they left and I did, I, I, I was 50-50 if I was ever going to see these people again. You know, there was this great documentary going on in our community and I'm like, I was cool. Whatever just happened, I was cool. Hopefully I see him again. I mean, they were only there for 10 days, you know, so uh, at that point. And so I was like, yeah. Who knows how this is all going to play out, but uh, whatever, that was a pretty cool thing. And then, you know, fast forward, I think three months and Trevor, uh, the producer for uh, Wake Up, or not for Wake Up, for the Discovery Channel, he called me and he's like, hey, I think we might be coming back. And I'm like, all right, let's do this. Yeah, let's, I'm excited to see you. Like, we'll just start over and figure this all out. So they came back, you know, still in COVID uh, to finish off the show. Yeah, that's the COVID thing was crazy, man. And uh, how is it right now in your in your in your place the COVID, um, your restrictions or percent occupancy on everything restaurants are open bars are open gyms are open so we're you know we're the numbers kind of they, they they crashed and then they just went up a little bit but they're getting a lot better with the vaccines and stuff how about you guys oh man don't ask me don't ask me that question it's crazy man it's crazy oh god bless you man it's crazy like we all totally at lockdown i don't know it seems like it seems like a joke. I don't know, man. Like people are out. Everything is normal. But, you know, when you're taking a bus, first of all, the shopping centers and everything is closed and you cannot buy any drinks when, when you go out, as far as I know, until 9 p.m. or something. I, there are so many crazy rules here, which I do, totally don't understand. When you're going to a shopping center, you have to set an, set an appointment, you know, which is really crazy, man. You have to call them, say, OK, at, for example, in two hours, I'm, I, I would be there and they ask your name. And then you have to write your phone number and address when you go there. And you have to wear a mask, you know. Oh, and it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh-huh. I hate it. I hate every second of it. And what do you, what's your job? What do you do? Uh, so actually, you know, right now I'm 20 years old. I am a business with my father. Uh, yeah. The same business that we were doing in Iran. You know, we are representing OEMs companies in textile equipment, like textile lab equipment mostly. Actually, we are representing a company from USA. They are in Massachusetts, yeah. Oh, and we are doing that job, yeah. That's our main business. Well, yeah. Good for you. You know, I try to use like the Grand Cardone advices, but I, I don't, I'm not sure, I'm not quite sure that it works on our business because, you know, we are, our, you know, our audience would not be like ordinary people. Like they're really a specific group of the, you know, the, our target market. It's like really specific. Special yeah. like the OEMs, heads of OEMs, and so like it's crazy. But anyhow, so I mean, it's good that uh, good to hear that COVID almost is away. Like you're living your normal life over there in in Pueblo. Yeah, That's good to lot. hear. Yeah, America. I mean, the vaccine's been out for a while now. Everybody's qualified to get the vaccine, so it's uh, that's definitely helping. So that's good to hear. By the way, like the question that I have about your snooze and snap fitness business. Yeah. How did the turnover, or if there is any change that you that you feel comfortable to share with us, how did that change? Like when Grant came, and right now you had that experience with Grant, like because you know from RJ, his business changed totally, like five hundred percent, six hundred percent growth. But you know after a year, 
Right now, it has been like a couple of months that you left Grant, or actually Grant, Grant left you. But I mean, do you see any change in your business, in your, I don't know, in your strategies that you were using for your business? Yeah, for sure. I mean, Snap got completely shut down for a while. So we were, we were forced to pivot and change a lot of that. But Snooze, you know, my radar was always Snooze was going to, we're, we're, we're franchising. So we'll, we'll, we'll be a franchise uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and when we're, when we're officially that, we're going to go nationwide with the, with the Snooze brand itself. Uh, so we'll be able to take that to everywhere. And then we bought, we have a bed in a box called Snoo Sleep that'll be delivered, shipped anywhere, kind of like a Purple or a Casper. I don't know if you're familiar with those brands, but we'll be able to ship a bed directly to your doorstep. So a lot of stuff that was in the works, but we've got a lot of extra momentum for sure. You know, we've got definitely franchises sold in different areas and people interested in different areas um, because of the next movement, because of people that I've met throughout some of this stuff. So yeah, it's definitely going to, help spearhead it and you know it's good publicity we, for the rest of my life i can say as seen on discovery channel you yeah. know my my book says as seen on the discovery channel now you know it's got a forward by grant cardone it says as seen on the discovery channel so i can say that now you know so that doesn't hurt no that doesn't hurt i actually wanted to come to the point of your own book can you talk about talk, can you talk about like, like you know when i when i follow you on social media besides from an entrepreneur you're like mostly a family entrepreneur i would say like being a dad and being an entrepreneur that's you know i i don't understand being a dad thing because i'm not a dad but you know it's really interesting i i always have this challenge okay if i have like a fa- if i create a family for myself if i have my own family how can i you know find a balance between you know working my business and my family that's really hard you know For me, it's it's challenging. Although I I'm, I don't have that uh, you know right right now I don't have that challenge. But can you explain us you know talk to us about that a little bit more? Yeah, I mean the whole premise of the book was that you know because family first to me like I I, I do everything I do for those for those people in my life my my wife my children my my mother in law my family but I'm I, that is that is my why everybody has their why they have their reason on why they want to become that next or or work so hard to do it. My family is my why, and, and it is a juggle. It's a balance, and that's really why I wrote this book was to show that, hey, it's possible. It is, it is a lot of work, but you've got to let go of certain things. And, and regardless, you know, nobody ever has a luggage rack on a hearse because, you know, you can't take the shit with you. So don't, don't worry about the little things too much and how to make the more amount of money. Worry about making memories. Worry about this, wow. you know, making child making your children good humans and that they care about life and that they're enjoying life like that's what it's about like we were in Hawaii last week and, and it was just making those memories for my kids is is what it, they're, they're too young to remember this trip probably but for me as a dad I'm like their first time seeing and doing going on a helicopter whatever it is that's that's what life's about you know make those memories even if you don't have a family still take time to, to smell the roses because life is too short to work your ass off and, and never enjoy that like work hard play harder. That's always been my motto. And, and you got to play harder. Like it's not, life's too short. Don't, there's too many people that work too hard and then they're on their deathbed and they're like, man, wish I would have, you know, done, been, been with my children or, or had a few more memories out there, you know, and money, money ain't gonna do anything for you when you're dead. Yeah, exactly. That was a great thing that you said, work hard, play harder, man. That, that's the first time I hear that. Shit. Really? That was yeah. amazing. That's, that's my motto. Work hard, play harder, you know, and, and wow. do it. Take that seriously. I don't, even if you don't have kids, balance yeah. go have play you know like so many people in this world get stuck in the monotony of, of life and you know your your transmission goes out and you somehow find two to three thousand dollars to fix your transmission but to go play and go on vacation somebody be like oh i don't have money to do that i don't have time to do that like but but you, you can figure it out otherwise make time figure that shit out life is too short go yeah. play right now you found the balance you think Yeah, I mean, it's always a challenge. I mean, every, my life changes every day. We got so many moving parts. We're opening extra stores right now, a couple extra new stores in Springs. You know, I, I'm flying out to Vegas this weekend for a convention, you know, and then next week I'm seeing Grant. So there's a lot, but it's always a balance. You know, I was at football games last night. I'll be at football games all day tomorrow. Like, so there is a balance. I'm judging on an entrepreneur. Actually, I'll be judging with Glenn Stearns tomorrow on an entrepreneur competition. He's our, our speaker. Wow. Our speaker, so. Uh, excited like all that kind of stuff so sometimes there's things to do but i make up for it for sure i've i found the balance i at least i i know my priority in life so there there is always will be a balance for sure that's great what's your daily routine like as an entrepreneur as a successful entrepreneur i'm up at 4 30 in the morning pretty much every day and i'm on the treadmill elliptical or i'm at the gym first thing when i get up and just get my body moving i'm listening to the books audible whatever's in my life at that moment that i'm working on i'm listening to something about that 
to kind of double dipping. And then I, I, I literally get an hour or two of work to plan my day. What's my important stuff before my family even wakes up, you know, and, I, and that's one of my chapters It's called bending time, but it's really finding those nuggets in life where you could get, I mean, I literally could work three hours before my family wakes up and wow. they don't need to know that. Like they don't need to know that, you know, that's, that's my time to get this stuff done. So while I'm with them, I'm with them. I'm present. I'm not, Oh, I got to get this done. Sorry, kids go. I'll be out there in a second to play football. No, I, I'm ready. Let's go play football. I already got that stuff done. And if I didn't, I'll do it tomorrow, 4.30 in the morning. So, you know, it's it's all about prioritizing. But then after that, it's, you know, whatever's on the, like right now we're working on some big proposals today. We're working on uh, getting a big, we have a pretty big meeting on Saturday, Sunday. So we're preparing that with the vice president of Tempur-Pedic. Uh, so just a lot of moving parts that we're working on. But, uh, you know, we have a 9.05 meeting with the whole teams here in the next 30 minutes. And We'll have all of wake up. We got about, you know, between 20 and 30 people in a big circle and it's just a giant powwow. We get everybody excited for the day. Talk about successes from the day before. That's, that's my every, every day, Monday through Friday, that's nine Oh five. We have a big meeting here and, uh, and then it's, it's game on. That's, that's what do we got to do? There's, there's always a lot of meetings and moving parts throughout the day, but yeah. When do you end your day? Like when do you like stop working during five the day? O'clock. Five o'clock. So it's like, we can say like four to five, like 13 hours, almost uh, 13 hours. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, there's gaps in there with the family when I get them ready for school, take them to school and all that stuff in the morning, you know? So when the kids wake up at, you know, 637, I'll uh, hang out with them, get a breakfast, all that, and then take them out. Yeah. So there's a good hour or so before, but yeah, something like that. But I'm, you know, when I'm done, I'm done. I got to be out of here because I can work till midnight. I always have stuff I'm behind on. There's no, and there's never a, oh, I'm done. I'm caught up. That'll never happen in my life. So. You got to cut it off and move on. Yeah. But, you know, I, me personally, in our business, I love being busy. But the problem is right now, I, I almost have the same routine. I woke up, at, I wake up at four normally. And, you know, I stop working at six, seven. But the fact is, you know, I'm not that busy. I don't have, I, I, I'm just struggling finding things to do, actually. Because, you know, our business, you know, it's, it, you know, the market is not that big especially yeah. when you're when you're starting you know uh, but anyhow you know I, mostly i'm thinking about how to find ways research it like I, i tell everybody you know even i don't care what business you're in you don't have to reinvent it get on youtube you know figure out how the biggest person in your industry got and start researching them and figuring out how they yeah. get into that yeah develop. i feel like there's always time to sharpen your own saw and get better at what you're doing for sure exactly uh, matt how can we find your book Uh, serialdadpanure.com uh, serial spelled c-e-r-e-a-l like a, like the bowl of cereal dadpanure.com that's that's that uh, got grants forward on the back yeah um, but serialdadpanure.com you can get that or just go to amazon amazon's got it serial dad uh the audible will be out next week and then i got a couple other kid books and some other i got a book i'm writing just about this experience with me and grants as well so i got oh, i'm a big fan of that Yeah, that'll be a fun one. There'll be a lot of stuff. All the, that'll be all the guts and glory and all the, and the behind the scenes will be on there. Yeah. You know, it was a couple of nights ago that I was watching one of the episodes. I don't remember which episode it was. I think it was, you know, the episode that you finally find your future office, the oldest building in Pueblo. Yeah, that's where I'm at. We're still under construction. That's where I'm a hot mess in here. So there's stuff yeah. everywhere. But I, I recognize that. Yeah. yeah it's it's but awesome. The, but the amazing part was like, the grant, you know, Grant says, okay, you don't go to bank. And he introduced completely a new type of buying real estate. Correct. Like owner caring or, I don't know, owner financing. Right yeah. now you're still at the owner financing thing? Yep. Yep. For five years we are. And it's, it was a great, I mean, we literally closed it from beginning to end in about 10 days. Wow. But, you know, I, I think, you know, I was, you know, try, I was struggling to find out, okay, what's the concept behind that and why does it make sense? Because, you know, banks, when you go to banks or this, you know, or, or find anyone to finance that, you know, they always require different type of documents. Okay, you have to check this one out, check that one out. But, you know, when you cut off the third party, it would be much easier. But I think, you know, that makes sense for people who are starting, for example, a business like you, like in future, you would, you know, you would face with a lot of turnover, a lot of revenue probably. And hopefully then you can pay like the owner, you can pay the owner, you can pay your bills. For the real estate thing yeah I, and you can so the, the the bottom line is like so I've, i've bought tens of millions of dollars in real estate and i own commercial properties a lot of them um but like i've gone through the headaches of sba and banking and, and it, it's months and months i mean I'm, i'm building a new snooze right now that i've been eight months just to get the subdivision process to get this thing built yeah. so it is such a time-consuming thing 
Where this, if you have two parties, us, we, we, we wanted to buy this, they wanted to sell it. They get a pretty significant tax advantage to carry this over a certain amount of time. So it's a win for them. And then for us, we literally shake hands, do through all the legal process and we owned it in 10 days. There was no hoops to jump through. But then the beautiful part is like within five years, then you just go to a regular bank and then refinance it right out of them into the other bank. And then that's what Grant does so well with syndications is he'll do that with apartments, get all these people's money and invest into them in the syndication, buy the apartment, refinance it in two to five years, pull the money back out, pay the investors, and then he can own the whole thing. So like he, yeah. he's good at that. So like that's watching him now. I'm like, ah, oh, this, this all makes sense. You know, about the refinancing thing. It has been less than seven days that I understood the concept of refinancing. You know, Robert Kiyosaki for sure, right? For sure. Yeah, in a, and he was one of in his new audiobook, like "Fake" is the name, "Fake Teachers, Fake Money, Fake Assets." That is new book that he wrote, and he was talking about infinite return, like no money in the deal, but you are still making money from the deal. Actually, in real estate, in his case. And then I watched a couple of videos on YouTube. Uh, from the guy who manages his uh, uh, properties. And I mean, you know, the whole concept of refinancing and uh, cashing the money out that you have in your real estate deal. And then you are still making money. That's, you know, blowing my mind. Like, that's crazy. And that all makes sense. You know why these people are so smart. And when I talked about that with other people, like older than me, or even like they are retired. But when I talked to them about that, they don't understand the concept. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's impressive. And it's, I mean, the rents keep going up so it's easy to refinance it and get the money. So it, yeah, it all makes sense. And Grant's got $2.4 billion worth of real estate right now because of it. Yeah. 2.8, I think is the number. Wait, yeah. No, yeah, he, probably did. he just bought some more stuff. So last time he was. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. I know he's trying to get to 10 real quick. Yeah. He, he wants to get to 10 billion and goes to, I don't know, Wall Street and crack them up. Something like that. I don't know. I heard in, in one of the podcasts, he hates Wall Street so much. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, Matt, do you have any special projects that we, we should know of? No, I think just the stuff I was just talking to you about. Like the, the bed in the box we're working on, which will be a nationwide, worldwide uh, mattress that we'll be able to ship everywhere. Um, and then, you know, we're working on being able to get these snoozes all over. Wake up where we will be a nationwide company, so we will start taking on customers from all over the world, um, or at least all over the nation right now. Um, yeah. So, yeah, a lot of exciting things between the, the you know, getting outside of Follow to help this community grow and help have learn and help other businesses grow you know wake up other businesses that's the goal here that's the goal man and we enjoyed thank you again for being on undercover billionaire we enjoyed yeah. the show so much seriously and you know best regards for you your family and your team yeah thank I, you really I, much I, I don't i i will say man i don't know you very well but in a little bit of time i can tell you you're you're, you're destined for something special at 20 years old to reach out to me and say hey get on this thing <laughs> That says a lot. That's that takes guts oh. and that's a big deal. So keep that drive and don't stop until you get whatever you want. You're destined. Thank you for really much, man. Thank you very much. You know that that happens when you have Grant Cardone as your mentor. There you go. Just do it. What's yeah. the worst thing? Thank you really much, man. Okay. Yeah. So I, I really oh, appreciate that. Yeah, no, appreciate it. Yo, have a nice Friday, right? All right, my man. Happy Friday. Yo, you too. Bye.